Hello there, I'm Christabel Dilks and I'm a writer and a script editor with a background in film and television drama uh, at Channel 4 and at the BBC and I now teach screenwriting and film production at the University of East Anglia. In this headline lecture I want to talk to you about how scripts work, so why the script is such an important, maybe the most important element in making a film. And I'd like us to consider who uses scripts and how do actors and the director excavate the script in order to convert it into a piece of filmed drama. So in this short recording, I'm going to introduce you to just some of the many ways that people making a film use the information that is encoded in a script. And then I'm going to ask you to do some detective work on a short scene so that we can talk about it when we meet again in October. And I'll be really looking forward to hearing your ideas. So I'm now going to share my screen with you and just talk you through how I go about looking at a script in order to mine it for information. How do scripts work? Well, let's just start by considering which sort of shows have a script. So you've got a few images here uh, from programmes you probably recognise. Um, let's start at the top with Frozen Planet, a nature documentary. Is there a script for that? Well, you might think, well, no, not really. They've just got to watch the, the uh, killer whales in this instance and wait for them to do something. And then they put it all together and make a lovely programme out of it. Yes, in a way, but they probably have a script of some sort before they start shooting because they have an idea about what will be the dramatic moments that they need to have in that film. And they will certainly have a script at the end of the programme for the commentary. So yes, even a nature documentary has a script of some kind. Who is that in the middle? Well, that is the BBC drama um, in the line of duty. And that, of course, has a script, as you can imagine. And that's the kind of thing I was working on when I was at the BBC. What about a game show? Would I lie to you as an example? How far is that scripted, do you think? Do you think these comedians are pretty much talking, um, you know, just spontaneously, or are they actually quite well scripted? Well, it's pretty shocking to discover that the whole programme is probably scripted. So in fact, they're very adept at performing as if it were spontaneous, but naturally the programme has to be uh, amusing and has to be you know appropriate and and the whole thing will have been scripted probably a long time in advance maybe allowing for a few ad libs we say so the next uh bottom left there we've got a still from love island now i wonder do you think that has a script or not it definitely purports to be a piece of authentic interaction doesn't it real reality that's what we're being told that we're getting but um as some of you probably know from controversial news stories about the show actually a lot of it will have been scripted so producers and television executives will have sat in their offices as i know only too well i was at channel 4 when big brother was first on air um, and they'll have made decisions about how they think the storylines of the show will go and they'll be very keen that the participants actually perform to some degree to that script. Then we've got something like a breakfast show on television. Well, again, that has to be fairly well scripted. So even though it probably comes across as quite spontaneous, there are elements, as you can probably tell, where the presenters are speaking to camera and they have a, a prompter which is rolling and they're just reading what's off the prompter. But even their interviewees, will have been asked very specifically beforehand which questions, uh, you know, what, what they'd like to answer, and they'll have given answers. So although the whole thing flows out as a live broadcast, in fact, much of it is scripted beforehand. And then we come to uh, a movie like Spider-Man, and of course, that has a, a, a script which is written long in advance. So the script, and this is an example of a script from a feature film, is an incredibly important document and it's most important for drama or for a feature film in ways that we're going to explore in the first half of this presentation. 
This is the blueprint for a building. It's what architects will draw up in order to make sure that their design is what is actually made by the builders. And here's an example of a beautiful drawing uh, for the Guggenheim Museum in New York. So you can see from this drawing how it relates to the Finnish image. But in just such a way as the architect's drawing relates to the finished building, giving information for all kinds of people who work on that building to do their jobs, so a script for a feature film gives all kinds of people information for how the film is to be made. And this is the script, the first page of the script, which we're going to look at from Little Women. And there, in fact, is a still from the film. So the script is, in fact, the blueprint of the film. It contains all kinds of information needed to make the film, and it's used in different ways by different people who are involved in making the film. So who is the script for? Before we get into looking at it in detail ourselves, let's have a little think about why is it such an important document? Well, if you're the writer of that script, it won't even see the light of day unless your agent approves it and says it's a good piece of work. So the first thing you do as a screenwriter is send your script off to the agent and you'll just want the agent to check out, is it good enough? Is it good enough to send to the people who will give it approval to have it made? So the agent often can stall a script right there and say, no, you need to go back and do another draft. Once it's deemed good enough, to be sent out by the agent, it'll be sent to a producer, probably a producer in a production company. And one of the jobs that you might like to have if you pursue a career in film or television is to be a reader, someone who works in a production company, reading the scripts that come in. It's a really uh, fun and interesting job to have if you're interested in scripts. But you'll have to read an enormous pile of them just to work out which other scripts that are worth making. Um, and you'll have to write a script report to assess the script, the strengths and weaknesses of the script. If the producer thinks, yep, this is a good piece of work, this is a really interesting script, they will be trying to attract either a commissioning editor in a broadcasting, in a broadcasting company like BBC or Channel 4, or they'll be hoping to appeal to a financier, someone who would get a feature film made. So they'll be asking themselves all kinds of questions. Is this a really original story? Has it been told before? Is it uh, the kind of story that will appeal to the kind of market who are going to watch films? So it probably won't surprise you to hear that most people, people that they want to attract either because they're the people that advertisers want on television or the people who go to the cinema, are people in your age group, the sort of 16 to 24 year olds. That's the holy grail um, of where people want to attract audiences. So they'll be thinking them to themselves, little women, does that really appeal to a young audience now? Or even if they think, well, mm, the book pretty old, you know, it's really not the kind of thing. But Greta Gerwig, who made Lady Bird, you might have seen other films of hers, Maybe she has got a take on this film, which we would be interested in. So they're going to be seeing the kind of way that the script handles the original material. One of the first things they'll try to do is attach an actor to the script. So they'll be reading the script thinking, are there some great parts in here for big name actors? Because if we get those people atta attached, they will bring money, they'll bring finance along with them. So the financiers will be hoping to attract funders who will put money into the project. And all of those people that you can see on the screen, all of those people will have to agree before the film can even be made. So as you can see, that's quite a, a tough ask for a, a screenwriter to appeal to all those people. But now let's look at who will look at the script. Now we've got the funding, assuming we've got the go ahead to make the film, who is going to be looking at the script and what information can they find out about it? So we need to think now about who's who on a film set. Who does it take to make a film? And I've got a few slides here which give you a lot of information. So you might like to take this section a little more slowly and go back and read all of it. I'm not going to read all of it now. 
but I just wanted to go through some of the main jobs with you just to just so that we can uh, think about what these people will be looking for in the script. So before we even get to the set, we've talked a little bit about the producer, the executive producer, the line producer will be overseeing uh, the main budget and the schedule of the film. And they'll have a production manager who will look at the day-to-day -day decisions about how the budget and schedule, which is really important in filmmaking, are handled. There'll be a production coordinator who will do the kind of the the, the, the very practical stuff like hiring cast and crew, making sure everybody can get to set on time. And they'll probably have to hire early on a, a location manager to look for a location where the film can be shot. Then there's another department who will come on board, the art department. So these will be headed up by the production designer who will be translating that script into a visual feel for the film. And I've included here a still uh, of the costume so that you can start to think about how a costume designer, who's just one of those people in the art department, has to go about bringing that script to life. They will be taking clues from the script as to the character uh, of, the, of the main characters in the film, indeed every character in the film, and trying to work out, well, what should they be wearing? How does that, why should this character wear these sorts of colours and another character wear different sorts of colours? Those are very important decisions, as you know, from having watched lots of movies yourself. And then there's the set designer. So they will be designing the whole mise-en-scene, as it's called, the entire environment of each set that's in the film. Every little detail about the, about the way the film looks, the, the backdrop, but also the props, the things that people handle, the things they pick up, the pictures on the wall in the background, all of those things that are so important to give us information about the film. Then we come to the production crew. Well, of course, the director is one of the most important people in making the film. And they're not hired always at the very beginning. They might be hired some way into the process once the money has been raised and everyone is secure that they've got the financing to make the television drama or the feature film. In a feature film, they might come on board sooner. But there are some other people in their department. There's the first AD, the first assistant director, so that's the person that you'll have heard sometimes if you've watched a, um, an extract of a film set, a film being shot. They're the ones who really will shout first positions and even action or cut. Sometimes the director says nothing on set. The second assistant director really is in charge of making sure that everyone gets to on set on time. They all manage the call sheets and make sure that everybody's organized with movement orders. The continuity person or the script supervisor is a really, really important job. They're keeping track of every single shot as it's shot and logging which lines of dialogue are included, which camera angle this is from, which hand the actor picks up their cigarette or their cup with and making sure that it's the same every time, as well as things like that the costume looks the same in every take. So that's a really important job. And then once the film has been shot, but they will come on board beforehand to make decisions, you'll have the special effects or visual effects supervisor. On the set itself, there's a camera department, often of many people, but the most important of them will be the director of photography. So they will determine the look of the film in terms of literally where is the camera when the film is shot for each of those, for the, each of those shots. And if you come and uh, study at UEA, one of the fun things we do at the very beginning of our film and television production module is set up a couple of exercises where we ask students to experiment with where to put the camera for a very, very simple scene in order to see what the effect is of shooting, the shooting from a different position and indeed moving the camera rather than cutting to move the position. So cinematography is a massively important thing. It would contain the ideas about not only how to move the camera, but how the shot should be lit and many other aspects, which we won't we won't go into with little time. But it's quite fun to understand what these names are that slide by in the product in the role at the end of the credits. Very important in filmmaking and often underappreciated is the sound recording. So sound is the first sense we acquire as babies and often the last sense to leave us when we die. Sound is a primal way in which we respond to film and filmed drama. So the recording of sound is tremendously important. And the sound recorders too will be looking at the script um, for important clues for their work. 
as we'll discover in a couple of minutes. We've talked about the art department. After the film has been shot, the editor and several other people involved in the editing of the film will come on board and they will be piecing together those shots that have been recorded in the set to try and make a continuous filmed piece of drama that we, the audience, believe as a piece of real life. So there's a, an incredible magic to that, um, but it's governed by very strict technical rules, which, um, and again, they will be looking at the script too, to understand what their job will entail. So now let's go back to our bit of script again. This is just the first page of the script for Little Women. So imagine now that you are a producer and you're going to raise money for this film. Greta Gerwig's come to you. She's obviously a, a brilliant director. You like the look of her, but you just want to have a look at the script and you want some clues as to whether you're going to find this easy or difficult to finance. Let's see what we notice. OK, let's look at the first line. Interior, New York, publishing office, 1868. Well, if you're a producer, Alarm bells may already have started to ring because it's set in 1868 and here we are in 2022 um, and it's very difficult to shoot what's called period drama. So period drama means anything in the past. In other words, even if we shot a movie in the 1990s, that would be in the past. We'd have to source different clothes, different cars. We'd have to think about the kind of mobile phones people used then. So. Um, period is very expensive for filmmakers because everything, literally everything on set has to be made or brought in from an antique shop or a, uh, a flea market or wherever. So the next line, Jo March, our heroine, hesitates. In the, in the half light of a dim hallway, she exhales and prepares, her head bowed like a boxer about to go into the ring. She puts her hand on the doorknob, a pause, and then she opens it onto a disorderly room. It is full of men. Some sit with their feet up on the desks, higher than their hats, which they do not remove for her. They smoke and read, hardly noticing that she has walked in. Jo walks through the desks, looking for one in particular. So let's pause a second there and think as a producer, what is going through your mind? Well, probably you're thinking, OK, it's quite a big set, this one. Am I going to find a real location to do this? Or given that everything has to be made from scratch, am I going to work on what's called a sound stage? Am I going to go to a television, a film studio where I can control the lighting, I can control the sound, and I can build sets to look like this office? Um, probably that's what I'm going to do as the producer of this film. So what do I need to have in this set? Well, uh, it looks like I'm going to have to have a hallway set and a main office because although the character starts in a hallway um, and it says interior publishing office. So we, we're definitely in the office. But it sounds like we can see her through the doorway, as in that little still I showed you earlier. So we can see her in the, so we need to have a hallway. We can't just have a door. We need to have something behind the door and that has to be lit. So, oh, that's more expense. But nevertheless, we're going to have that. We're going to have a, a, an antique door as befits 1868. And then what do we need? We need some desks. We need some men. They all have to be dressed. They need hats. Uh, I'm going to have to do some casting. So the first thing in my mind as a producer is, do they speak? Because I'm going to pay actors a different rate if they talk than if they don't talk. Well, fortunately, in this scene, they don't talk. So that's great. They are just supporting artists. So far, so good. I've, I've already envisaged that I'm going to have a set. I'm going to have to dress it. I've got a hallway behind and a bunch of male supporting artists. Jo, clearing her throat, says, excuse me, Mr. Dashwood, the oldest, smokiest gentleman, looks at her. I was looking for the weekly volcano office. I wish to see Mr. Dashwood. Mr. Dashwood stares silently. Jo, nervous, presenting pages. A friend of mine desired me to offer a story by her. She wrote it. She'd be glad to write more if that suits. He stands and extends his rough, large hand. She gives him the manuscript. Mr. Dashwood turning the pages over. Not a first attempt, I take it. No, sir, she is sold to Olympic and Scandal and got a prize for a tale in the Blarney Stone Banner. A prize? 
Mr. Dashwood. Yes, says Joe. Okay, so now we're into the first uh, exchanges of our scene. So far, so good. I'm thinking I'm going to have to hire a pretty substantial actress to cover, to carry this film. She's, as it says in the script, our heroine. And I'm probably going to need to hire a pretty substantial actor as Mr. Dashwood, because the conflict between the two is clearly going to be important. So I want to pause this moment of conflict while we consider a couple of other jobs in the script. We've talked a little bit about the producer's point of view, the worry about the money, the period, the sets. Now imagine that you are the designer of this, this film. What kind of instructions does the film give you? You're going to have a hallway, you're going to have this rather big smoky office. Maybe it's a dark, she says disorderly in the script here, but it'd be quite fun to make it dark, a bit threatening, a bit menacing. The men have their feet up. So there's a sense maybe of chaos everywhere. You're probably going to want to dress the set, as it's called, with some documents, some papers, some books, typewriters, and maybe some posters of previous editions of the of the newspaper, some newspaper um, editions themselves. It's fun to think about all of the things that would need to be put into that room to give the feeling of a real newspaper office in 1868. Finally, let's think about if you're the cinematographer, the person who designs the way that the cameras will shoot this film, or the sound recordist. There's also information in there for you. And I don't know if you'll have spotted this already, but if you think about Jo as she stands in the half light of the dim hallway, the script tells us that she exhales and prepares. Now imagine that you had just a wide shot of a room with a woman in it, maybe behind a door, exhaling. You probably wouldn't even spot that she was breathing out. So this information is a clever way of our writer, in fact, it's the writer and director in this script, but if you've got interest in screenwriting, you can embed clever directorial decisions by a line like this. She exhales and prepares, tells us that there has to be a close up on her. That's the only way, isn't it, that we would see her exhale. So imagine now, I'm a cinematographer and I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna need a big close up of Joe at this point through the glass of the door, exhaling, preparing, her head bowed like a boxer about to go in the ring. She puts her hand on the doorknob. What are you thinking, cinematographers? Close up of hand on doorknob. That means the camera needs to be outside of the room, looking from Joe's point of view in. So we're definitely going to have to have our camera outside the room as well at a certain point and record that action. Then we come into the room, perhaps with the camera moving as Joe does, into this room full of men, so we see it from her point of view. Now, what we might do there as a cinematographer is lay down track. I don't know if you've ever seen this in a still, but it's literally like a little bit of railway track on which the camera sits on a very secure bit of equipment called a dolly, so that as it moves, it moves very uh, smoothly forward. We barely even notice the movement as a viewer, but it might be fun after you've watched this recording to watch the next bit of film that you watch and see if you can spot a bit of recording done from a dolly. Okay, let's not go any further into these details, but these are the kinds of things that are going to occur to you as you look at a bit of script for the first time if you're doing one of those jobs. So imagine now that you are an actor or a director looking at this script. What information do you need to know? What can you find in the script to help you do your job? To answer that question, we need to have a little think about drama. What is drama? Well, you probably have worked this out by now, but drama is essentially conflict. In other words, if there's no conflict, you haven't really got good drama. And the story, certainly in Western cinema and mainstream cinema, the story is generated by the main character, the protagonist's attempt to get something. They want something or they need something and that is what generates story. They start trying to get it. 
but of course it's not easy and there are obstacles in their way. So it's their attempt to overcome the obstacles that gives you a feature film or a bit of television drama. In any kind of drama, we need high stakes. What happens if the protagonist doesn't get what they want? The character must fail again and again, creating an experience for the audience of rising tension throughout the film until the resolution at the end. And that resolution might not mean success after all, but there is a sense of resolution, a sense that the story has been settled because the protagonist either gets or doesn't get what he or she wanted at the beginning. So when we're looking at any scene, and in a moment I'm going to give you a scene that I'd like you to look at before we meet again on the 3rd of October, we need to think about the dramatic circumstances of that scene. What's just happened before the scene began for the protagonist? And what does that mean for their arc or their journey through the story? So what emotional state are they in as the scene begins? You specifically want to think about this if you're the actor. What do they need or want as they come into the scene? What, what, what's their burning desire? And what are their expectations? Do they expect to succeed or not? And then, if, particularly if I'm the director, but also if I'm the actor, I want to know how does this little scene fit into the whole? You probably know that films are often made, most often made, out of sequence. So you probably would shoot all of the scenes that your character has in the library, for example, and then go and shoot all of the scenes that they have in their bedroom, no matter where they come in the chronology of the film. Very difficult. Put yourself in that different frame of mind. So you need to know this information about every single scene that you're going to shoot. And if you're the director, you're thinking, what do I want the audience to feel at the end of this scene? What questions does this scene answer? And what new questions does it raise? Particularly in the scene I'm going to show you, um, that question is very pertinent. So we talked a bit about how the protagonist has a goal, a quest, and that is usually an overarching goal for the whole film or the whole series or serial. And the story comes about because of their attempts to achieve their goal. They'll have, though, a number of smaller goals along the way. So to catch the shark in Jaws, Martin Brody has several little goals along the way. He's got to close the beach. He's got to hire a fisherman to try and hunt the shark. He then tries to lure the shark into shallower water. Then he tries to inject the shark with strychnine and then explodes the shark. So there's lots of little goals along the way. Um, and I mention this because really your scene might only have one small goal that's part of a, a bigger goal. The protagonist has to take action to pursue their goal, or we, the audience, we get bored and we disengage from the story. So on the 3rd of October, when we meet again, I'm going to talk a little bit about the dramatic blocks that we break a scene down into. So maybe you could look at the scene I'm going to give you and just think, could I break it down into chunks? each of which will contain one strong idea. That would be a good way to start thinking about how to direct the scene. Each of those chunks, though, will have smaller beats, little mini bits of action, which are important too, because they will tell us, as the actor particularly, how we're to say our lines of dialogue. What do we want the line of dialogue to do? And sometimes, I don't know if you've had this experience before, someone might say something to you, but you have the feeling that what they're actually saying is something else. There's a subtext underneath the words they speak, or even a kind of action underneath the words they speak. So a very famous uh, dramatist called Stanislavski came up with a method of physical actions in which we can see lines of dialogue as actually trying to do something to the other person. So let's have that in mind as we look through the scene that we're going to explore. And then there's a turning point. So I want you, when you look at your scene, to think, what is the turning point in this scene where things could go either way for the character? This is usually a moment of maximum attention, maximum engagement and tension for the audience. Will they or won't they? Um, bear that one in mind. So if we said each scene will begin with a protagonist trying to show, trying to pursue a smaller goal, and of course they will fail, and that's what propels them into the next scene. 
but there'll be something new that's been revealed about the character along the way. So what I'd like you to do is to look at scene 20 from episode one of the drama Normal People. Now you might have seen this. If you haven't seen it, will you do me a favour and not look at it before we next meet? Just examine the script and see what you can learn from it. Because I want us to be kind of detectives looking at the script and seeing what information we can draw out from it. Here is the first page of it, just so that we know which one we're talking about. You can see that it says 20 on the top, interior photocop photocopying area day. And I would like you to read the whole script and to think about what we said before when we were thinking about everybody doing their jobs. You might like to think about whether you're a designer or the cinematographer, but I'd like some of you at least to think about playing the role of Marianne in the script and imagine that you're the actor who's been given that job. What are you looking for that will help you play this part in this scene? And similarly, I would like some of you to imagine that you are Connell, that you are going to play the character of Connell. What do you need to know from the script? Some of you might just want to be the director and have an overview. So that means understanding Marianne and Connell's points of view, as well as considering lots of other things about the script. So that's it. I would like you to look at the scene. It'll be sent to you by email. And of course, you can read the entire episode if you'd like to. Um, that will give you some important information about the dramatic circumstances of that scene. Um, and you might like to look at this uh, recording again to think about the things that we talked about, about how you would analyse that scene, how you'd break it into blocks, maybe even units, maybe think about some of the actions underneath those lines of dialogue. And when we meet on the 3rd of October, we'll go through that scene together. And I really look forward to hearing what you've got to say about it and hearing your interpretation. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.